Get your Bibles. I did not get to see the uh, service on last Wednesday because there was a malfunction in the videotape, but I really wanted to see it. Uh, the videotaping, uh, is, is, to me, is a great ministry because if you're not here, then you'll get a chance to experience you know, a reasonable facsimile of it. It's not anything like actually being here, but to be able to do the video, I think, is a blessing. And I think Paul tells Timothy in his final epistle, he tells him to fight the good fight of faith. And that's what we're fighting, a good fight of faith. You can't fight with your fists. You can't fight with a 357. But you fight the fight of faith. Uh, you have to uh, keep on believing. God gives to each man a measure of faith, Brother Jeff, where sometimes you just get down. Sometimes you just uh, look like Mother Bracey. It comes out of nowhere. It's like you're going along since another Christ, you're doing fine. And then out of nowhere, you just like a, a tsunami has hit you. And you just find yourself down. Uh, but it's a good thing. And we're going to look at that tonight. Because it, it's when the tsunamis come in that we really realize where we are. And we realize who's with us. Because um, when the tsunamis come, that's when the fake friends and the folks that don't really belong to us, that's when they leave. And many times we're surprised because of what we've done for them. But I hope that you've lived long enough to realize that you can't spend enough money, you can't buy enough lunches in order to get a friend. God has to give you a friend. And as you mature, and we want to talk about that tonight, as you mature, you begin to realize the value of a friend. Amen. The value of a friend. Many times, Brother Davis, a friend can do what your money can. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's, that is really true. And so we're just oh, yeah. grateful. Let me say this right here. Every time we assemble, everything is everything is not about being saved. Mm -hmm. Everything's not about being saved. We, Sister Word Lord, understand Ephesians, the second chapter, in the eighth through the ninth verse, where the Bible says that we are saved by grace. We have that understanding, Brother Arthur. It's hard to grasp because in the world that we live in, Sister Harry, uh, you don't get anything for anything. Everybody wants something for whatever it is. Yeah, and sooner or later, you were surprised. We're listening now. But now, what is it that you want? Many times when people call us, they make small conversations well, for a little while. But after a while, they get around to them what it is that they, that, that they really want. So then, um, we're just grateful to the Lord that he is teaching us how to live. Amen. And uh, we're getting ready to go into some teaching, basically, that deals with getting out, getting out of dead-end roads. Uh, many times you're on a pathway and you're really not going anywhere. No matter how hard you run, no matter how hard you work, but, but you, they, they are dead ends. Mm -hmm. Now, we started out teaching on Matthew, and uh, I'm sure Lady Deborah did a lot better job last Wednesday as far as structure. I'm in, I'm in the game, and the Lord looked like the heavens opened up while I was at the game, and, the, and looked like the Lord said, you should have been at Bible study. <laughs> they played so sorry. But uh, I got a text from uh, mother, sister, Jackie Fleming, that said that we actually studied Matthew tonight. 
But you know, I thank God for my companion, and I thank God that she has her ministry and I have mine. Amen. And whenever you learn to flow as God gives you and quit trying to be like somebody else, all right, all right. that's when you'll be successful yes. because you're, you, can't, you can't be somebody else. The book of Matthew was designed to show us, the study was, to show us the Jewishness of it. You must understand, if you're ever going to understand your Bible, you have to learn how to rightly divide between the nation of Israel and the church. The nation of Israel is not the church. The nation of Israel is not the church. The nation of Israel is a called out people who God called out through Abraham in Genesis, the 12th chapter. From Genesis 1 up until Genesis 12, everybody was the same. Everybody was in rebellion against God. People had uh, come up with their own God. How many know that, God, that people are going to worship something? Yeah. Yeah. People are going to worship something. I commend you for coming. Wednesday nights are hard, y'all. Because every one of us, some of us have been up since 4.30, 36 30 this morning. And not just up, we've been up doing something. All right. And so now it's 6 o'clock. And so the natural thing to do is to leave your body some rest. Not to come out and sit up and pay attention and listen at a, a study or school or whatever. And so I commend you for coming out because it is worth our time. But it is, a, it, it's, it's not natural. The natural thing at 6 o'clock tonight is for all of us to go home <laughs> and get some rest. But in order to fight this fight of faith, we have to get an understanding of God and his word. Because as I said before, the tsunami is coming. This test, this trial of your faith. And so now the nation of Israel started with Abraham. Abraham had two sons, Isaac uh, and Ishmael. Ishmael was not the child of promise. God used that as an example uh, to show that now you cannot step out or depend on anything except what I promised. Now, Ishmael was real. Ishmael, Isaac, I mean, Abraham loved Ishmael, but Ishmael was not the child of promise. So then, Mother Nun, I must learn how to hold on to what God says. You see, God esteems his word very highly. And that's what is so dangerous about, uh, Lisa, about going to church because the devil wants to throw you off. Instead of esteeming his word as high, we begin to esteem the pastor. We begin to esteem our church. We begin to esteem our order of service. We begin to esteem our pews. We begin to esteem our choir. But now when the devil confronted Jesus in the wilderness, and that's where he's going to confront you, He's going to confront you in the wilderness. He's going to confront you when you're isolated. He's going to confront you when you're at your most vulnerable point. Jesus was hungry and he confronted him, but Jesus did not uh, tell him anything about this, what he had done, but he gave him the word of God. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So then he had two sons, uh, Abraham had Isaac and Ishmael, but Ish Isaac was the child of promise. Genesis 22, God told him to take this what I gave you and, and sacrifice it. So what, what are you saying here? What I'm saying is, is that God at times sees, will you trust him with everything? Will you trust him with everything? You see, we've been pity patting in church for much too long. We've been acting like it, but I want you to know some life is real. And real life will show up. And if you're not prepared for it, if you're not prepared for it, so we didn't not just coming out here, you know, we could be somewhere else. But we're trying to get prepared for the battle that's coming. The old folks used to say, oh, what is it? They said, there's a storm out over the ocean. I don't know the word, but I know it's <laughs> and it's moving this way. Uh -huh. So, uh, from uh, Isaac had you had Abraham, Isaac. Then Isaac had two sons, uh, Jacob and Esau. And Jacob wasn't the best child, but he was the chosen one. 
And so God uses that to say that, that now, just because folks highly esteem something, I'm not like folks. I, I look at the heart. I don't look at, at what y'all look at. You know how, have you ever had folks that misjudge you by just looking at you on, on the outside? They, they looked at you, and now you've got old enough now to let them do it. You used to try to explain yourself. You used to try to say, well, no, it's not like you think or whatever. But you've got old and wise enough now to just let you think what you want to think. Uh huh. Because you're never going to know me anyway unless God shows you who I am. So Jacob was chosen even though he was a trickster. And from Jacob came the 12 tribes of Israel. They were only a tribe. They wasn't nothing. And that God uses that to show that I don't need a whole lot in order to you work with. I, I don't need for it to be no. They say you was the least of people. I didn't choose you because you was great, Andre. But I chose you because I loved you. There God gives an example of just how powerful that his love is. I ain't got about two or three folks here that know that if somebody hadn't loved you, you wouldn't be nothing right now. Oh, my Lord. So the saints used to sing a song that said, love lifted me. It was, it was love that gave you the, the unction and gave you the drive in order to do better. Right. Folks trying to understand is, how did you come up out of what you was in? Somebody loved me. Yes. They loved me, Linda, until I could get to the love of God. Until I can understand just how much that God loves me. See, love is a, has no reason. The love is not in how beautiful that you are. Because as you get old and you start losing teeth and losing hair. And you, you, your skin is not as tight as it once was. Love still sees the beauty in you. That, that's what love. Let me tell you what love does. Love sees you even when everybody else is talking about how unlovely that you are. When everybody else is saying ain't nothing to you, love is saying give them to me. I, I, I can. I can. Somebody took you in when didn't nobody else want you. Somebody took. They took you in and they saw something. So, so he uses that to show and they and then he takes them from the land that he promises them and takes them down into Egypt. Uh, they looks like they're doing good, but they end up in bondage. And so now he uses that as an example to show that I'll allow you to get in a tight situation just to show you how mighty that my hand is. Because you see, you don't understand that Pharaoh, you don't understand who Pharaoh was. So you live now in 2015 around Obama and all these folks, but you don't understand who Pharaoh was. When they looked at Pharaoh, they looked upon Pharaoh as a god or as the god. That's the reason the lady devil was teaching in the Lord's Academy when, when uh, uh, Moses them came to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, who is your God that I should let these folks go? I'm God. But now Moses, God told Moses before Moses went down there, he said, don't worry about it. He said, he ain't going to let them go. I'm going to harden his heart. But I'm going to show. They don't know now, but they're going to know. Look at your neighbor and tell them, say, they're going to know. They're going to know. They don't know now, but they're going to know. And so God brought them out with a mighty hand. Then he brought them to the Red Sea where it looked like they wasn't going to get out of nothing. I know Pharaoh thought we got them now. But God opened up a way out of nowhere. He used that as an example to show that there is nothing too hard for God. When man sees no way in order for you to be delivered, my God will make a way out of no way. He's done it. He's done it too many times. Now, Andre, they go up through the Red Sea, and Miriam begins to rejoice, and they go not into the promised land, but they go into the wilderness, and they wander for 40 years, the nation of Israel. As they wander for 40 years, why didn't they go straight in from Egypt into the promised land? Well, God explains that I led you in the wilderness to prove what was in you. He let them stay in the wilderness in order to show them that I can set a table in the wilderness. I got about two or three folks here that I tell you said that it don't have to get no better in order for my God to show up. As a matter of fact, my situation right now, if it don't get no better than it is, I still have confidence that God will see me through. The old saints used to say, look him, you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. Brother Davis, that's something when you got a personal experience with something. 
Now, when you hear about something, that's what Job said in the 40 some chapter. Job said, hold on. I had heard about you. But I know you for myself. You see, Job was held in high esteem among his friends and his colleagues. You see, you don't never know God until your colleagues turn their back on you. You don't know God until your friends don't want to have nothing else. You don't know God until the folks that you've been looking up to don't want to have nothing else. That's when you begin to know who God is. You find out, Lisa, that he is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. God takes them and makes them a mighty nation and he gives them a law he gives them direction but the law was simply a schoolmaster to bring them to Christ and so when the Messiah come when that Christ comes they don't know him because they have fallen in love with their law you see the law is uh, holy the law is pure but what the law does for the see our problem is is we have a depraved heart that's the reason I tell y'all there ain't a dime worth a difference between none of us. Some of us are able to hide it better than others. The, Jeremiah said it like this. Jeremiah said the heart is deceitful. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't think that. You know, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, do you remember when you did something that you thought you never would do? Mm -hmm. yeah. You got by yourself and you said, I thought I would never do that. That's the reason, it's, that's the reason you need to keep your mouth off of other folk. Because the very thing you talk about somebody else about, you find yourself doing it. The heart is deceitful above all things. Who can, who can know it? Thank you, Jesus. So when the Messiah comes, they don't even know him. Turn to Romans 11. I'm warming y'all up, getting y'all ready for the book of James. That's what we do. <laughs> We're going to James. We're in between Matthew and James. But I said Romans, right? Yes. Romans 11. Romans 11. I'm sorry, it's Romans 9. Romans 9. Romans 9 and 30. You see, we said that God is not a respected person, but God did make a difference. God made a difference. He said, Israel is my son, the apple of my eye. And so we have to understand Israel in order to understand the Bible. We have to understand, Mother Nun, Israel's place in the heart of God. God chose Israel in order to be a city that sat up on a hill, uh, a, a light that was not to be put up on the candlestick. Israel was supposed to be the example to the world because Israel was given the knowledge of the true and living God. Mm -hmm. And so they were to be a nation of priests. They were to take the rest of the world to the true and living God. But they failed. Because when their Messiah came, they didn't know him. Why did they fail? Did they fail because they weren't trying to keep the law? No. They failed because they didn't realize that they couldn't keep the law. The same reason that church fails now. I wouldn't spend seven minutes at a church that was trying to get me to keep the law. Because you're taking me on the wrong path. The Bible, don't, the Bible only says that the law is a schoolmaster. The law is designed to teach me something. The law is good, it's holy, but it's not supposed to teach me that I can keep it. Because of the weakness of my flesh, I cannot 24 hours a day, seven days a week, keep the law. The only thing that would make me believe that I could keep it is pride in my heart. And there are people like that, a few. There are people that will tell you right now that I'm living holy and I ain't, I, don't, I ain't done nothing that I know of. That's the pride that's in my heart. It's pride. And that's what happened to Israel. Israel became proud, Andre, of being Israel. They forgot that God was the one that made them who they are. They wasn't nothing. 
They were nothing. And God made them who they were, and they became proud of who they were. And God said, I won't share my glory with anyone. God's not going to be in the midst of anywhere where y'all glorifying the pastor. God ain't finna be in that mess. He said, I won't share my glory. That's the reason when Paul talks in 2 Corinthians 4, and he, he's talking uh, about how the Satan uh, blinds the mind and all that. Paul says, well, we have this ministry, seeing we have received mercy, we faint not. And then he says something real telling. He says, we have this treasure. You see, if you have been saved and if the spirit of God lives within you, you got a treasure within you. You got something within you that the world don't have. You have something within you. You have direction. You have guidance. You have a light within you that the rest of the world doesn't have. They really don't know, mother. They just don't know because they don't have it within them. But Paul clarifies that that's no reason for you to get proud. You see, because even after you get saved, you can get full of yourself and start talking about what you don't do. You, you know, you, you go around now, you going to somebody else's house telling them to put their cigarette out. How you going to go to somebody else's house? Honey, put them things out. I can't stand it. Well, go home. Go to your house. You, you see? But, but you can get full of yourself thinking that it has something to do with you. But Paul says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Now, what is an earthen vessel? Uh, it's a, it was a clay pot. They took the trash out with it. That's just how valuable that it was. In another place, the Bible speaks of, we have in a great house, there are many vessels, some of gold and silver and some earthen. They ain't worth nothing but to take the trash out. And that's all we worth. So the value ain't in us. All right. The value is, is who is in us. Thank you. We ain't no more than nobody else, but it's who's that we are. Thank you. Peter puts it like this, that we've been bought with a price. Thank you. We've been bought with a price. I mean, no, I'm talking, Paul says that. We've been bought with a price. We are not our own. Peter says that we will not purchase with silver or gold a perishable thing, but with the precious blood. He shed his blood. I want to go down to Eli. I don't want to say he shed. He shed it. He shed it his blood on Calvary Hill for me, honey. Thank you, Jesus. What did I say? Romans 9 and 30. He said, what shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which follow not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness when the righteousness which is of even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, have not attained to the law of wherefore, because they sought it not by faith. Right. Rome, uh, Hebrews 11 chapter says that it is impossible to please God without faith. God simply wants me to take his word and believe what he says. Take it by faith. They sought it not by faith, but as it were, by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. Christ is a stumbling stone for the world. Because it just don't make sense to them to meet you. It doesn't make sense. How you saying? You talking about you just saved because what he did? He died on the cross and was buried and, and resurrected. Yeah, I believe that. But but you got to, you got to do this. Or, or you got, no, that's not what the Bible said. The Bible says that I'm saved by grace. It's not, not of myself. It is a gift. But I have to understand that Israel was up under the law. And that they were commanded to work. All right. They were commanded to work, and the work was supposed to bring them to a place of exhaustion where they would throw their hands up, and they would say, I can't do it. But how many know, many of us was raised in, a, in an atmosphere, Vivian, where that was the most shameful thing that you could do, is say, uncle. You, just, you could have me down, you could have your, you could have your, your knee in my head and everything. Say, say, uncle, say, uncle, I ain't, I ain't going to say it. I ain't, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give up. That's the only thing God ever wanted in us to do. Just give up. Quit trying and believe on me. And anybody that ever got delivered, you didn't get delivered because you got strong. You got delivered because you gave up. Amen. 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 
when I gave up and I cried out, I said, God, help me. Because I can't help myself. So now, turn to the book of James. Turn to the book of James. And these, the reason I'm going over these books or God has me going over them is because they're in the Bible. And God wants us to study the whole word of God. We've spent a lot of time studying Paul's epistles, and we should, because those epistles are written to who? To us, to the church. And so you should read your mail. But now, I said James, didn't I? Second Timothy, turn to Second Timothy 3. Second Timothy 3 and 15. Paul is talking to Timothy. This is Paul's last letter, y'all. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're writing your last letter, you're trying to shoot your best shot. He's writing to Timothy, his only son, his son in the gospel. Mm -hmm. And he writes to him in 15. He said, and, you know, and that from a child. Let me start at 14. He said, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. And that's what we're doing tonight, y'all. And I will reiterate that I commend you for coming to Bible study tonight because this is not natural. When I saw my mom down there and getting ready to come in, I thought I had in my mind is, I said, we're still holding on. We're still holding on. Uh, I think she got, she got saved in 78. I got saved in 80 or whatever. I said, but, you know, it's Wednesday night, but we're still holding on. We're still going forward. You have to be consistent. You have to, you have to in, in order to get anything done, right. you get up and you do, you do the same thing every day. I've been wanting to do better and lose weight for I don't know how long, but it didn't ever happen until I started doing it every day. Right. Today was day 101. I've been working out for 101 days straight. Right. Amen. It's, it's working, as I pulled po my mother Minnie told me. I think about day 40 or day 50, Lisa, mother Minnie, you know, I said, oh, oh, yeah. you, don't, you don't have this. This is not <laughs> But, you know, the, 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 the difficulty with that is, is that when you do have that, you can't let that stopped you. You said, well, you know what? That's the day. But if I keep getting up each day, eventually, eventually, but it's got to be, and it's the same way with uh, fighting the fight of faith. E each time. But then, you know, we have to make sure that when we come together, we, we don't come together for foolishness. Thank you, Lord. We come together yes. to study the word of God and to let God have his way. And I don't, I don't try, y'all, to, to have my own lesson. I just said, God, you give us what we need. All right. You give us what we need. Second Timothy 3, what did I say? In 14, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned. Mm -hmm. See, Mother Nun, I know I ain't on my own. And you get criticized. You, have you faced criticism? Mm -hmm. Some of you have faced criticism by coming out here. You know, it's this and it's that. But, you know, you, you have to continue, and you have to know where it comes from. All right. if you, you, you have to know that God is leading you. Thank you Lord. He says, and that thou, and that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Mm -hmm. God been dealing with you for a long time. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lord. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 16. All Scripture. Not just Paul's epistles, but all scripture mm -hmm. is given by inspiration of God from Genesis to Revelation. But, Brother Gilbert, I have to understand. Remember Acts the 8th chapter where you had the Ethiopian eunuch was in the chariot and he was reading there in Isaiah 53. And Philip came close to the chariot and asked him, 
You know, when you you know when you full of God and everything, you see somebody reading the word, you want to go up there and ask, what you read? What's what's going on? I'm you know, I'm a believer too, you know. He said, What 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 you tell? Do you understand what you read? And the Ethiopian you and asked, How can I accept some man? And he began to open up to him how that Jesus was the very Son of God. Amen. And that scripture was speaking about him and uh, his suffering and passion. So he says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Now, the doctrine for the church does not come from the book of James. It does not come from Matthew. We're going to look in James, and you'll see in James, you don't see anywhere in there where James tells you that you're going to be released from uh, your guilt, from your sin, by believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, I mean, yeah, Jesus Christ. That's not there. The book of James is very Old Testament. The book of James is in 40, written about 49, uh, uh, BC, 49 AD. Uh, the book of James is even before the Jerusalem Council, which is chronicled in Acts the 15th chapter and Galatians the 2nd chapter. When Paul went up, you remember Acts the 15th, when Paul went up to the Jerusalem because James had become the pastor of the, of the synagogue that was there in in Jerusalem. And Paul went up after his first missionary journey, Acts 13 and 14, he went up in order to tell them what God had given him to preach. He was not telling those folks that they had to keep the law, be circumcised, keep the Feast of Tabernacles and such. But he was telling them that by believing in this man, you could be forgiven for what the law never would set you free from. And he said, I'm going up to Jerusalem because there's false brethren up there that sneaking down, telling these folks that they got to do this and got to do that to be saved. And they still doing it today. They still doing it today. Folks got enough nerve to tell you, you tell me something, if you ain't been baptized in Jesus' name in hell, you will lift your eyes. So you have to know, doctrine is not a bad word. Doctrine is simply come, it comes from a Greek word, diakonos, which simply means teaching. And beloved, ain't nothing wrong with good teaching. Nothing wrong with good teaching. I thank God. When I see how foolish these folks act now, no wonder the children act so foolish because the grown folks foolish. I seen, I seen grown folks acting foolish. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. I thought my folks was off, but my folks was good. Because I never saw them act like I see some of these grown folks act now. You can tell sometimes you just how how, how folks, what kind of house they came out of. You know? And that's the reason that when you, for before you get married, dude, you at need, least need to make a trip to the house. <laughs> I know you're looking at her legs and looking at all that, but you need to take a look and go look at the house. I, I told you, everything ain't about being saved now. God means I'm just about life. He says, so our doctrine comes from the 13 epistles that Paul wrote, not from Hebrews. You don't, you don't get your, your doctrine from Hebrew. You don't get your doctrine from Matthew. You don't get your doctrine from the book of Acts because the book of Acts is a transitional book. They're transitioning from the law to grace. And so people get their doctrine from, when you get your doctrine from the wrong place, that's when you get, and I'm, I'm telling you, that Satan don't mind you running. You can be saved. It don't mean you're not saved. But if you got the wrong teaching, you're just backwards. And Paul says that when you run, you, you don't run as one that beat the air. You have to, uh, it, he, he talked to Sheila like they were in an athletic contest. And he says that you have, when you strive, you have to strive lawfully. If you're going to shoot a basket, you have to be within certain parameters. You can't shoot just anywhere, and you can't, you can't double dribble, then shoot, or whatever. You, you, you've got to strive uh, lawfully. So now, he says, it's good for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, the other uh, Bible, the rest of the scriptures that's not directly to us are still good for us, y'all, for reproof. When the book of James tells us, say, you need to watch it, you talk too much. That's good for everybody, fam. Ain't nobody sitting up here and don't talk too much. 
I done got to talking some time and I caught myself in the middle of it and said, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Especially when you realize who you're talking to. You say, oh, Jesus. Now, because now if you got, if you got that bosom, if you got somebody in your bosom, you don't have to watch yourself. You can just talk. That's true. That's true. But that's few and far between. Amen. Because folks specialize, Lisa, in caring conversation. And the conversation don't hurt nobody as long as it stay right where it is. Right. But the moment that it travels 10 feet, right. you can be right up in church. If it go cross over there in the other eye, right. you got a fire going. Right. So now when James, James is com he, it's just like the book of Proverbs. It's in the, it's in the New Testament, so-called, but it's like the book of Proverbs. It's just good teaching for life. All right. The stuff that you need to know in order to have, I told you, everything ain't about being saved. I can't stand Lisa being around folk to everything about being saved. How you doing today? Saved, thank the Lord. <laughs> but how did you well, that's you know, that about the last time you had to worry about me coming to see you. Thank you, Jesus. You can't you don't want you can't talk about basketball, empire, Fetty Wap. I'm sorry, y'all know about that. <laughs> Nothing. Everything got to be about being saved. And everything ain't about being saved. We got to leave. We ain't finished brought no ring to leave here today. No. I hope. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. For instruction in righteousness. Look at verse 17. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. Paul getting ready to leave. He talking to Timothy. He said, Timothy, you got to know more about, about more than just being saved. You're dealing with all kind of people. Now, look, they were off into the Gentile nation. These folks didn't know nothing about the Old Testament. They didn't know nothing. They came up out of abject idolatry. And so he needed to be furnished with knowledge in order to be able to help these people. Turn to the book of James. So now, we want to look at the book of James. James was who? James was uh, the half-brother of who? Jesus. Jesus. And he was the full brother of who? Brother Gil? Who was that? Huh? He was the full brother of his, he was the full brother of his brother? That's true. What was his brother's name? Jude. Jude. Hmm. See what happened when you think? So I knew that. But we just kind of get lulled into, like, Pastor, just feed me, Pastor. Tell me everything I need to know. No. That's not education. That's elementary education. As you actually begin to grow, you begin to think for yourself. And, go ahead. All of them were Mary's son. It's just that Jesus wasn't whose son? He wasn't Joseph's son. But all of them were Mary's son. But after Mary, after Mary was found with child, remember in Matthew when Mary was found with child? And then uh, 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 Joseph, Joseph was like, I ain't having this. You think I'm going to marry you? Are you already pregnant? But I don't want to, you know, make a public shame out of you, so I'm going to put you away privately. But God sent an angel to talk to him. said, no, don't do that. He said, this thing here is the Holy Ghost. Now, I guess Joseph must have been a good man because I don't know if I would have bought that or not. Oh, look at y'all. Somebody come to you and say, well, you know, there's a Holy Ghost child. We said, well, the Holy Ghost go out and take care of him. <laughs> I ain't thinking about y'all. <laughs> y'all know y'all don't play about that. <laughs> but the rest of the children, of course, the Catholic Church said that Jesus said that Mary didn't have any more children. That that was, you know, that was it and that she was this and that. They put her in the same level as they put Jesus. They prayed to Mary and whatever. But see, that's what happens when, when you don't believe the Bible. But now, don't get too hard on them. Because there are Protestant churches right around here where the pastor wants you to believe him, not the Bible. <laughs> so don't get so hard on the Catholic and stuff. 
That's easy when man wants, he wants to share God's glory. I don't want God's glory. I want God's glory within me, within me, because I know then I will have a truly happy and a satisfied life. That's foolishness. You ain't not a God. You are, you are not now, and you won't presently be. Right. Never will be God. They're they too big of shoes for you to carry. You really are. Something wrong with you when you want all of you want praise and you want you don't love them people. You don't love them. You love yourself. All right. And that's what's wrong now is we're fooling around with too many folks. And, but I'm cutting them loose. Once I find out you don't love nobody but yourself and everything, I'm just trying my best to tell you, you're a river dirt chair. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Underlay, under, okay. <laughs> he says, James, a servant of God. James does not say it's James, a brother of Jesus or whatever. A servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes. Look who he writes the letter to. Mm -hmm. He writes to the 12 tribes. Now understand, this is not written to save people. This is written to a nation. That's just like writing saying, okay, Bandle, writing to all African Americans. Are all African Americans saved? Of course not. They have the opportunity to be saved. The Bible says that he does not wish that any would be lost, but that all would, you know, all men would believe. So, so, but he just said this is to the nation of Israel. And you must understand uh, who the nation of Israel is. They are important to God because God chose them as his. Uh, turn with me over to Romans now. Romans 9 and 1, the Bible says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Paul was a Jew, wasn't he? Uh-huh. The whole Bible was written by Jews. They said Luke was a Gentile, but they can't prove it by the Bible, because, but I can prove, I can prove that, that he was an Israelite. But Paul here has heaviness. You ever had that way for your people? You said, Lord, Lord, I should, Lord, help my child. Save him, God. God, help him to turn from this foolishness. Help him to see that that way is not. And that's how Paul felt about his, his people. Because he kept, remember in the book of Acts, how he kept going? God sent him to the Gentiles, but he kept going to the synagogue, didn't he? He kept going to his people until they, finally in Acts 28, uh, chapter, he said, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm knocking the dust off my feet. I'm going on to do what God told me to do. You see? You keep running to folks trying to make them be what you want them to be. Verse 3 said, for, God, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Who were here kinsmen according to the flesh? Israelites. Y'all have done good. It's about 10 till. Y'all give me about five minutes and you All made it. Right. He says, for I could, okay, look at verse 4. Who are Israelites? Those are his kinsmen according to the flesh. To whom pertaineth the adoption? These were the only people that God had adopted. The nation of Israel. How, why wasn't we taught the importance of Israel? Because they took Israel and us, Sister Lenny Patterson, and they put it all in a blender, and they said we was all the same. Because they were too lazy. To study. You see, in order to rightly divide this word, you have to put hours and hours into studying right. in order to understand what's for <laughs> us and what's for them. But the advantage of it is, is that you don't end up running the wrong way. Right. You don't end up taking oil, throwing oil on folks when the book of James is written to Israel and he tells them, call for the elders and let them anoint with oil because the nation of Israel was always anointing with oil. Right. You don't end up taking folks, putting them up on the water because the water was the, the cleansing for the priest. You see? But when people are too lazy to study the word and to find out for themselves because I, just, I didn't have nobody to teach me. But when they are they're too lazy to study for themselves, then you end up running and not getting anywhere. But you don't preach for 40 years that I can take this oil and put this oil on you, and I can heal you from cancer, but then you die from cancer. 
So let me tell you something about God. God don't fail. If God tell you something, it works. Whether you believe it or not. God doing something don't depend on you believing it. Believe that. Because God is who he is. Regardless of who we are. But now, with the nation of Israel, it worked. It worked. But with us, y'all, it don't work. Am I saying that God can't heal? No, 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 no. No, no. He is. He, God, his name, he can heal. God will heal. God has healed. God is healing now. Amen. Okay? Amen. But it's not according to the program that he had with Israel because Israel was to go into the kingdom and the kingdom there was not to be any diseases, there was not to be any wars, there was not to be any confusion. The lion could lay down with the lamb. Uh, and when Jesus came in Matthew, what was that, y'all? That was a preview of the kingdom, wasn't it? The kingdom has come down to you. He brought the kingdom in. And that's the reason when there were sick folks all around, he healed all the sick. All right. Because, you see, Israel had to have a sign. And so now, remember when John was, was in prison? Yeah. And John, now, now the, the trip part about this, Lisa, is, is that John was the one that announced that Jesus was the Son of God. He said, behold, the Son of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. But now, when he get in prison, See, see, that helped me with you church folk. Right, right. See, because it, it's, when you get in trouble, it's different. Uh -huh. you, you, you can say a whole lot of things until it's you. John said he was the son of, son of God, but then, Mother Helen, when he got in prison and they were getting ready to cut his neck off, John told his disciples, said, go see, is he really? <laughs> I'm sure we look for another. I should, what did he say, Mother? I should we look for another? So you know you're ready. You know I ain't lying. He said, he said, go, go see. Is he the one? I'm getting ready to lose my head, Mother Brace. I want to know this the right one. Or should we look for another? Read it for yourself when you get home. This is what he did, Fair. He looked over there and he saw some people had blinded eyes. He opened their eyes. Some people over there had that deaf ears. He unstopped the ears. He said, go tell John. Go tell him what you see. Go tell John what you see. That's right. Amen. And he said, there's none greater all right, all right, in all the right, kingdom all right. other than John. All right. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. He was talking about John. John wasn't there. John was in prison. The Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. Okay. We'll talk after. I'm not following you. <laughs> I'm just not following you. I can I love you enough to be honest with you. Say, I don't want to stay. All right. Clap your hands for the Lord. 